Gadolinium is uh, the gadolinium ion is a toxin, and a um, uh, and even low doses uh, uh, are uh, damaged cells. Moreover, like other heavy metals, uh, gadolinium ion accumulates uh, in tissues over time. Gadolinium contrast agents. Um, are safe for human administration in um, uh, pharmacological doses because they chelate uh, or uh, uh, capsulize uh, the gadolinium ion. Uh, these chelates come in two general classes. Uh, there are uh, linear organic molecules that wrap themselves around the gadolinium ion, is, and then there are those uh, cages, uh, rings of organic uh, molecule uh, that have a slot into which gadolinium uh, drops. The uh, affinity of gadolinium for these chelates is higher in those uh, that have the uh, ring uh, form into which gadolinium slots. That is to say, those bind the gadolinium ion more tightly. Now what that means uh, is that the amount of free gadolinium ion after injection of the contrast agent is uh, very low with both but lower with the molecules that have the ring-like uh, cyclic formation. Uh, it has been discovered that the, um, uh, with recognition of uh, the risk of uh, a rare complication of gadolinium uh, contrast agents, uh, ne uh, nephrogenic sclerosing fibrosis, that the risk is higher with the linear chelates uh, than with the uh, cage-like uh, ring structures. Uh, and that is consistent with uh, the syndrome uh, being a result of the free gadolinium ion. More recently, it's become clear that patients who receive frequent, um, uh, uh, serial, um, uh, frequent or serial uh, MR examinations using gadolinium contrast show a progressive accumulation of contrast uh, in particularly in deep gray matter uh, within the cerebral uh, within the cerebrum. Um, this uh, has been observed with uh, in patients who have received uh, serial higher doses of the linear chelate um, um, and is uh, not well described uh, for the cyclic chelate. Again, this therefore is believed to be a consequence of repeated exposure to relatively higher concentrations of the free gadolinium ion. Moving forward, the, the long-term health uh, risks posed by this gadolinium accumulation are not yet clear. However, uh, based on evidence with other heavy metals and what we know about gadolinium toxicity in general, it is believed that the accumulation over time poses a potential health risk, although not yet quantifiable. In consequence, um, it um, has now become clear that doctors should minimize um, uh, exposure to gadolinium chelates, um, and um, it is uh, probably the case uh, that uh, cyclic chelates should always be preferred over linear chelates. In my own practice, I see no reason to choose anything but the cyclic chelates, um, and I rarely use gadolinium uh, for the monitoring of patients where m following the change in the T2 lesion load, looking particularly at the volume of enlarging T2 hyperintense lesions uh, in the white matter, uh, can be used as a surrogate.